we are welcoming one of the new assistant coaches for the Rochester Americans, Nathan Page, to get things started today. Nathan, congratulations on the uh, promotion, the next opportunity for you within the organization. Uh, quite a day and quite a build up, I'm sure, to this moment. Yeah, thanks, Duffer. It's it's exciting. Obviously, I've been in the organization for a long time in the last two years in the development role and then moving to this new role with some of the players I've already worked with. It's just feels like a real natural fit and I'm excited to get started. Pedro, Coach Seth Happert has been saying it all year long that he and Mike Weber and Mike Opeka would play euchre and play cards at the front of the bus and all of that. So are you getting excited about playing cards again? Like you used to be one of those rookies that we would bring to the card game and try to win money off. Now you're you're experienced guy. So are you excited to join a card game again? Well, I'm smart enough not to know not to sit left of you. I, I told the Duffer this story on the Penguins. Um, but Danny Breer made me move seats because Danny kept losing because Marty was so bad that he would just he would he would make the guy next to him lose too. He'd take him down. With <laughs> so as a rookie, I got Danny's like, all right, that's it. And he moved me next to Marty, and then I started losing. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh man! So I've learned a few things too. So I got to figure out where my seat's going to be. <laughs> Well, um, how do you how do you put into, you know, kind of words, your excitement level for for what's next here for you and for obviously the entire group? It's hard to really put in words. I think you guys know what this city, this organization means to me. We're basically going on, I don't know, year 12, 15, whatever it is in this organization throughout my career, coaching, playing, all, all that. So to be a part of it and being on the bench again. Uh, I'm just, I'm speechless. Just getting that feeling back of standing on that bench, being in that arena, some place I hold so dear with with family and friends in the stands too. You got to remember my family and friends are all here because my wife's from here. I've lived here for 20 years. So I'm going to be on that bench looking up the stands and I'm going to go home and, you know, they're going to tell me what I did wrong. <laughs> so I, I just, not just me, but my whole family is just really excited for the opportunity. Okay, you talk about the bench. The bench scares me. Like when I was asked to go on a bench for youth hockey, like I I don't get the whole, and, and this is not, I don't get the whole like matching lines or whatever, but it happens so fast. I want to talk to a kid and all of a sudden, whoa, what, what just happened? I miss so much of what happens on the ice when I'm on the bench. Um, but you said the bench excites you. Like what is it about being on the bench that, you feel you can bring and it excites you because of the energy and, and your dynamic with the players. Well, exactly what you're talking about. That excites me. And it's going to be new. It's I'm going to have a learning curve, just keeping in your emotions in check and being able to react to the situation that's at hand, whether you lose a defenseman to a penalty, which lines you got to match all those type of things I'm new to. Uh, I've had it through youth hockey, but it's a little different scale than it is coaching a <laughs> hockey team. Uh, but that stuff's amazing, and I can't wait to be a part of it. And you almost have to curb the coaching a little on the bench to an extent because you have to be able to read and react to the situation going on and, and know who's up and know who's going and make sure you're communicating that well and save some of the coaching for in-between periods, whereas youth hockey – I don't care if I miss a change or not that I'm just sit, sitting there. If I'm on the board or something on the bench, I'm teaching them. So it's, it's going to be a learning curve for me, but I think the whole point of taking this job and moving into this position is to learn more, learn from apps, learn from Vinny, all these guys that have such great experience. And, and I'm excited just to grow m myself as a hockey individual away from the actual playing part. Do you believe that you would have had this opportunity had you not scored in your final game as an Amherst? Yeah, no chance. <laughs> what a way to go out. I think the reason I got this opportunity is because of my celebration after I scored that final goal. I think yes. I told you guys about the wiggle, my son's cele celebration goal, and how I had I promised him if I ever scored, I would do the wiggle. And then I, I, you guys would see me smiling, but as soon as I scored that goal, it was in my head. I'm like, oh, crap, I got to do the wiggle. <laughs> <laughs> 37 year old man and i'm doing the most ridiculous celebration ever but it, it the fact that that was my last ever game was a special thing for me i think it was meant to be because it was kind of me passing the torch on to my son where he's a hockey player now and i'm the dad and the coach but well, you know you what's crazy about, uh hang on one second. Yeah. Uh, what's crazy about it is like you talked during your uh, media introduction today about how you were in and out of the lineup that year that was like one month before COVID happened. So, you you know, it's hard to know 
obviously, what is around the corner. Now, I learned today that you actually ended your career on a two-game point streak. So <laughs> that, you know, really just validates, uh, you know, your your impact on the team that year. But when you think of it in that context, though, like a month before a pandemic, and then everything changes. And you said it today, like COVID ripped your skates off. So, um, again, like this is, it's crazy that this is now just another highlight in the journey, right? Yeah, I think it's just, it was a stepping stone into the new chapter for me. And it's kind of comical you say the two game points streak. I, what I meant, I played 10 games. I had two points the whole year. So let's not stretch <laughs> it like I was impacting anyway. I'm good I, at spinning. <laughs> yeah, that's what a spin that is. I, you probably, most people probably don't know. I was 37 years old and I had to teach myself how to take a face off because I'd never taken a face off before. And, and so there were so many cool things in that season that, that were special. And just, I was, I was an old guy learning new tricks and, and I was lucky that Tails and Bots, you know, had that. And Randy Sexton had the faith in me to keep me in that locker room, only playing 10 games, but hopefully understanding, I think they did understand the value that the culture we we're trying to create. And, you know, I have to thank those guys, especially Tails. He really pushed to bring me back to the organization. And I owe a lot to him to be able to finish my career out as an Amherst. And now moving forward, you know, Kevin and Terry and, and, apps and everybody and especially Adam Mayer who helped get me into the development spot and Jason Carmano so uh, you know believing in me into that position and now into the coaching position you talk about passing the torch to your son um you know what is funny is that I think most players when they retire and then they're retired for five ten years and their kids grow up they're like man I wish my kids could have understood what I went through as a player and you know the ups and downs of the team and playoffs run and all of that um so for me, it's the same thing. Like when I retired, I think my son was nine. So he understood a little bit, but not at the height of my career, right? When I was playing a lot. So is this something that you're excited about to to have your family and, and your kids older now to be able to see like the ups and downs and that you're really a part of a team, especially the Rochester Americans? Yeah, definitely. I mean, my kids in Grand Rapids we were able to win the two Calder Cups there and they're on the parade and stuff and got that experience, but they're young, but they still talk about it. And I think moving forward now, it's just being in the locker room. I, I, my son, he's a hockey player. He's He is just so excited to be in with like apps is so welcoming to family and friends. And so Kellen knows he's got a place there and he's basically moving in. And then my daughter, Mira, <laughs> even when I played, I used to bring her in to the Rochester and she'd go in the office and she has a big personality. She'd take over the office. So I'm just really excited for them to be a part of that. And the culture apps has created that family atmosphere and it's just going to fit to to what I believe in and, and what my family wants to do too. So I think that's why they can be so supportive and they are just as excited as I am. When did you start thinking about this? Like, not that you knew that Pekka and or Weber were going to move on, but like, how long have you really thought about coaching? Um, well, I wouldn't say in the last two years, I've really thought of it because I, I loved my job as player development and it was an ex amazing experience and a great transition for playing with player development. You get to work with the draft picks. You get to really experience a lot of different avenues of pro hockey and the behind the scenes stuff, whether it's watching and evaluating or see kind of decisions that management is making. You're in those meetings at times, like not all, obviously there's, there's higher up stuff, but you get to see a little behind the scenes. And then also you get to jump on the ice and get to learn a little bit on the coaching side. Uh, so the, I was able to, I think, learn and grow into a lot of different areas. And I don't know if I wanted to get into coaching right after playing, but I don't know if I was really prepared as I am now. I still have a lot to learn. I'll say that, but it's something I've always thought of my whole life. My first coaching job, I was 16 years old. Uh, it was in Leroy, Saskatchewan, and my cousin was a, so my sister was a really good softball player, and I was five years younger than my sister, so I was a bat boy as a little kid. So I grew up, my dad was a coach, he was a coach of the hockey team, my hockey team, then I coached my sister's baseball team, so I knew the sport and sat there having a catch for her for years, and my, I have a small whole, small whole town, I should tell people, there's 450 people. So there's not a lot of coaches in, in town to, that are available that know the sport. So my cousin was our, it was a really good player and she was my age. And she asked if I could coach. And I had time because I was, I was coming back from junior hockey and it was a split uh, semester. So I didn't have a lot of classes. I said, yeah, I'd love to. So 
I think from an early age, I got into coaching and I come from a family of coaches. My dad was a coach. My grandpa was a coach of hockey teams. So it's always kind of been ingrained in, into my family and, and something I've always gravitated towards, even in my playing career in the summers, whether it was running skates or when I was done running youth hockey, all, all sorts of things have kind of led me to this path. Now, um, Seth Appert was a goaltender. Vinny Prospel was a Ford. You did everything. You even blocked shots. So I'll say you did all of it. Um, what are you more excited about, like working with D or helping out some Fords, maybe some depth guys, special teams? Is there, I, I, I know you guys are just announced now, but is there something you're really excited about part of the, the whole, you know, task that gets divided between coaches? Well, I think the most exciting part for me is it's kind of continuing on the development path in my last three years in Rochester as a player where I wasn't really a player. It was more about the younger guys. I, it's more about helping them realize their dreams and getting to the their ultimate goals, and whatever that may be, whether that's a Calder Cup, whether that's playing in the NHL, is winning a Stanley Cup, just having some kind of piece and hopefully helping them along that path. And to be able to sit, I remember playing and sitting here Kellen would play mini sticks with with guys like Jacob Bryson would come Fitz, he would come over for dinner. They'd play mini sticks and he'd go into the rink and hang out with Tage. And then all of a sudden we're sitting on the couch and we're watching those guys start for the Sabres. And that's pretty special. And, and at that point in my career, it wasn't about my, me playing. It was about, you know, helping those guys realize their dreams and seeing some of those guys accomplish those was, you know, was special for me and my family. And to continue that, just however that may be, whether it's on the ice, off the ice, whatever piece of information or helpful tip I can give them on the coaching side and as of the personal level, that's that's what most excites me. Nathan Pache with us here on Sabres Live. He and Vinny Prospel joining Seth Appert on the Amherst coaching staff uh, that announced today. How do you ever take the time? Have you ever taken the time, and especially on a day like this, to read a team press release? And if you have, what do you how does it make you feel when you see what the Amherst put out today about your contributions to the organization? I would say as much or more so off the ice during your time with the team. Yeah, of course. I mean, you got to give props to Warren Cassell for that. Uh, I think Warren over pumps me a little <laughs> in that area. Just to, Warren and I have been together for a long time and, this is what a lot of people don't know is these people behind the scenes, the amount of work they do. Uh, there's people in the office, Marty, you know, all the people we've been around, uh, travel, all that. These are special people that they love hockey too, and they work countless hours. So I appreciate that what he wrote. And, and like I said, off the ice is just as important on the ice with the community. And that's why coaching here is extra special for me because this is home and that I have a special place with this community. And I, I do appreciate what Warren wrote and, uh, you know, it's very flattering and it means a lot. And just so everybody knows, though, those, a lot of work goes into those people writing those articles, different things, setting the, even up this call. There's mm -hmm. so many other people that are there helping us out every day. And, you know, I they just don't get the credit that they deserve. This or that, Pacher, were you a sleeping stand, like not standing, but sitting in your seat or sleeping, like laying across four seats? Were you sleeping on the floor on the bus? Like, how did you do it as a player? Because... You can't roll on the floor if you're a coach. Like you can't like lay down in the slush and all of that. But as a player, you do whatever works. So what what were you doing when you were playing to get some uh, shot eyes on the on the bus? Well, the evolution of 17 years, your bus seats change and the amount of seats you get change. So, <laughs> rookie, which I'm a rookie again now, I sat up and I slept like this because I had Chris Sorbin sitting next to me and he's a big boy. So I just, those nice shoulders <laughs> lean on those. <laughs> and then as I got older, I was able to take a little more room and I had those two seats. I had the four seater where I could put my feet across and, and get a little more comfortable. So back in a rookie, I think I'll be sitting straight up and uh, sleeping again. <laughs> was Torburn uh, long hair at the time? Did that wake you up with a couple of like long, like tick, tickling hair in your face. <laughs> no, it's not as long as it is now. And he barely can grow facial hair that. So that didn't tickle me too bad. <laughs> yeah, uh, good. Uh, uh, uh. Do you, I mean, now the door is open since we're talking about former players and teammates. What would you like to share about Marty right now, Nathan? Oh, I mean, there's endless stories about Marty. I mean, I we think only were that. together like six months. They can't be endless stories. Well, I'll tell you a great story. It's about Marty, but it's not actually marty that did it 
it was trade deadline and me and Adam Mayer were roommates and we were playing a game in Toronto and we actually were taking pregame naps. So we fell asleep and the phone rings and we're both our hearts drop. We just get up in the bed, oh. look at each other. And we're like, we don't know what to do. He grabs it. And it's Danny Breer. It's like, you watching this? Marty just got traded. And we're both like, Danny, are you kidding me? He just gave us a heart attack. He's like, well, you guys are hockey nerds. I knew you'd be up watching this. <laughs> So that's probably a little story about Marty. That yeah. Marty and then you and Mirzi cried and cried because I was leaving. So, yes. Thank you, well, Petra. I appreciate that. <laughs> my three-on-three -three goalie got traded. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't – like, so, like, when we played – because we played again later that year. I remember the last year of the season was in Philadelphia. Um, were, you, were you a chirper? Like, if – I don't remember – really you getting around me and chirping me or whatnot, but were you like a vocal guy on the ice? Were you a chirper? Uh, did you get into the scrums and had some good, good one, one liner? No, horrible. I was horrible. It, okay. Good. You describe me as a chirper. It'd be like a guy, pit, you know, with square wheels. <laughs> that, that, was, <laughs> that was me. <laughs> I was willing to stick up for a teammate, but it was it was with uh, with my heart, not my mind, when it came to chirping. <laughs> Good, that because is such... as a coach, there's some coaches like Steve Ott, right? Still, as a coach, oh, he chirps oh. everybody, and you're like, "Hotter, you can't go there. You're a coach now. You got to stop." So this is perfect for you, Pacher. <laughs> yeah, no, that's ingrained in Otter. I've played with Otter. I've known him for a long time, and I, he could never turn it off. <laughs> yeah, no, and square tires are like the ultimate. Canadian Prairie reference. I didn't <laughs> learn of square tires till I went to college in Calgary. And then I found out real quick what it's like when you go out at minus 35 and your car is thump, 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 thump. <laughs> That's your... Yeah, it Thanks for clarifying that because I had no idea. Oh, I just thought man. like, well, yeah, obviously when you got square tires, it doesn't go anywhere, but oh. it's an actual like thing that oh, when you your get car's big... too cold, you get a flat end and it just takes time to get rounded yeah, again. Big time. I Probably don't know you got to plug your car in to keep it running in the winter. No, too. I did. I didn't know that because I played way up north in Quebec, and my oh. my bullet dad used to plug his truck in and have a uh, a little heated fan inside that would kick in at every like six a.m. every morning, so it would warm up the inside of the car too. Because if not, it was completely frozen. Yeah. Do you think um, like little stories like that? Like, do you love finding that out about the current players? Like having that little bit of time where you get to know them way more off the ice and and then you know is that is that what helps kind of develop these relationships for you absolutely and i think i have a kind of a leg, head start on it because of the de development job that's really a key part of being a development coach is you can't just jump in and you know to have all these ideas for them and stuff you the biggest part of that job is to build the relationship first and then they trust you and the they'll know deep down that you're doing everything for their best interest, mm -hmm. whether sometimes that could be a difficult conversation, but you can't have those difficult conversations without the relationship first, where they trust and know that you're thinking of their best interests first. So yes, that for me, that's extremely important. And luckily with a lot of these players, the Amherst, I've already worked with them before, whether it's through development or just being there last season. So, or some of them I even played with, so mm -hmm. that makes it even easier. I mean, you look at uh, big Murr. I played with Big Murr, so there's a yeah. couple of guys still on the roster. There was more more last year with uh, Lawrence Pilot going overseas. I had played with Larry too, so uh, you know. And I think with guys that played with me being in that locker room, it helps give the younger guys kind of knowledge of who I am and who what I was as a teammate and how I cared about them. And and so that'll also help moving well, forward. Well, I'll give you a little uh, maybe background story on your assistant, newcoming assistant, Vinny Prospo. <laughs> Um, when Vinny was traded from Tampa to Philadelphia, um, he sat next to me in the locker room in Philly. And after like five days, he looked over to me, he goes, is there ever sun in Philadelphia? I need to find a tanning bed because he had played like six years in Tampa. He goes, I need to keep this glow. I need to find a tanning bed. So Vinny was, uh, you're going to love him. So yeah. So make sure like first time you see him or something, you say, ah, oh, so by the way, we can, there's spray tan over there. There's tanning beds <laughs> over there. Like just throw that in for me, please. Um, yeah. he's, he's really good. 
He might be shocked in Rochester. I'll be honest, Marty. I thought that story was going a different direction. I thought he was going to turn to you and say, do you ever stop talking? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't expect it to go that oh, way. Vinny I think, can talk. They, Vinny yeah, can I think talk. they're pretty close, Pacer. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Well, there we go. Oh, and he's got great gosh. stories, and he's got some bite to him. So, yeah, I have I played with Vinny Prospel in both Philly and the New York Rangers. And funny enough, I I thought that Vinny did not like John Tortorella when he was in in Tampa with him, and then about two weeks after Vinny was in Philly, he looks over to me, and goes, "I miss Torts." And then sure enough, like he found Torts back in New York, like he wanted to go back with Torts because he realized after the fact, like I like Torts, I like that he pushes me, I like his his system. So um, so yeah, you may you may learn a few Torts stories here and there in the locker room with Vinny, which will be great. Write those down and then tell us on the show all the things that he says. Oh, I can't wait because I, I I'm friends with Ryan Callahan and obviously Callie oh. with the captain, so he's told me some beauties. <laughs> oh, oh, definitely. So yeah, Callie would would have some good stories of uh, of Vinny as well because I think well, he played a couple of years with him. He did. I mean, to your point, just or the point I was making before, once you get those relationships like Vinny had with Torts, and Torts pushed him, and you realize it's what's best for you. But it yeah. you have to have that relationship first before the a player will accept it. Yeah. So how and do it's you not sell every player that likes that too, right? Some players yeah. don't like that. You got to learn them. But yeah, go ahead, Duffer. No, how do you celebrate then? This uh, this new this new title with your family and friends. Uh, my wife and I are actually about to get in the car and drive to Toronto to fly to Scotland right now. So, Ooh. <laughs> yeah, so we're going, we're from, development camps over and this kind of, we didn't know this was going to happen today. So we already had this pre-booked. She bought a trip there for my 40th birthday. So we're going, and it, here's a funny thing on the Zoom with uh, Vinny today, Vinny's wife bought him a trip to Scotland when he turned 40 as well. So we already oh, have that. No that way. Yeah. Now, why, why do you, like, why Scotland and, and. What's the itinerary looking like when you get over there? Uh, why not Scotland? Um, we're yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I'm part Scottish. My, my mom's from there. So it's, you know, it's, yeah, I, I would but, love to get back. So uh, we're going to go there. We're going to uh, go to Glasgow and then we're going up to Highlands and mm -hmm. tour the coast. We're going to tour some distilleries, some of the old distilleries. And then we're going to go to probably finish off at Edinburgh and oh, then wonderful. back to Glasgow to fly back. So. Everybody would ask any golf in there or uh, it's... It does, but no, cause it's just my wife and I, and it's yeah. not, golf trip so and she uh we, she was practicing this weekend at my father-in-law's place and she hasn't gotten any better at golf so i couldn't make 18 i couldn't make two holes with her playing golf <laughs> she's retired my son beat her when he was six years old and she's since retired but from golfing <laughs> oh man well you know what that's a perfect way to cap this that just sounds like an awful lot of good things happening for uh for a really good person that we've known for a long time and we get to continue this relationship here congratulations nathan a very exciting time thanks Duffer. thanks marty